Uh, as we continue to assess what are the outcomes and the uh, potential ramifications of this budget, I'd like to bring in Mark McQueen, who's still on the desk with me, and Waleed Solomon, who's the chair of Norton Rose Fulbright in Canada. And I feel so much more. You've really got the pulse on what boardrooms are talking about. You're the go-to person for activist campaigns. You're closely connected with the Conservative Party. So wearing all of those hats, you see the budget and, and the initial reaction I imagine you have is on the increase of, of, of capital gains taxes. Well, thank you for having me, Amber. I'll tell you, um, global investors, uh, board members from outside of this country, uh, entrepreneurs looking to set up shop, are all looking at the headlines like the one in the Globe and Mail I'm just looking at right now, which says federal budget 2024 targets capital gains for billions in new revenues. That is not an inviting message for business into this country. And that's a problem. And that's a problem that we all have to uh, work on together. Uh, you know, the social contract of this country is very important. And I understand that the, the programs that are being put forward are important for us to maintain that social contract, but someone's got to pay for it. And if we don't have new investment in this country, and if global investors, this is the headline that they're seeing, we're in a little bit of trouble. What about the surprise element? Because it seemed like we knew some sort of tax change was coming, um, but I think this is taking many by surprise, um, that this is the area that is targeted. What does that do? Does it, does, are, are businesses that you speak with, boardrooms, are they gonna feel caught offside? Of course, uh, the, you, the, these types of changes are always uh, to be managed. I think there was a little bit of a bait and switch going on here. I think they, uh, you know, there was a couple of headlines there for a few days about it, uh, you know, higher income tax rates for certain Canadians. Um, a windfall tax for all this sort producers. of stuff. But the, but the, uh, but, but today the message that 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 investors around the world are looking at is one that I think. Uh, is going to be negative for economic growth in this country. Now, the point the Liberals will make is that this is the first increase since 2001, so 23 years, that maybe perhaps this was due. Um, and Mark, as we were talking in the break, you kind of made the point that, yes, since 2001, no one has done something with this particular tax. I, mean, I think we can't lose sight of the liberal and conservative governments, minority governments and majority governments now for almost 25 years have left that, um, that kind of tacit number uh, alone for a reason. Um, you, uh, you know, our, our economy, if we don't want the government to invest in every business directly, that requires entrepreneurs to uh, go and go to angels and venture capitalists and private equity funds and so forth to raise capital for their good ideas, friends and family rounds, whatever it might be. And the moment you um, start to make that increasing less attractive, um, it'll just stop one day. Because if it's better to put your money into a T-bill or into a pipeline that produces a dividend that you can shield in a tax-free savings account or something, why would you take a risk on a startup or on your neighbor's or your nephew's business? You wouldn't. And, and we've, we're disincenting risk-taking. And you know, considering that American entrepreneurs uh, raised 34 times as much money last year as Canadian entrepreneurs did from venture capitalists, and their population's kind of eight or nine times ours, we already have a big problem in this country, and this is just going to make it worse. There are going to be some exemptions for entrepreneurs, uh, and we'll get more details yeah, on that. Yeah, I read that. in KPMG talked about a $2 million threshold for that entrepreneur, which is a bit of money for sure, but if your lifetime capital exemption was seven fifty, and now it's $2 million, I'm not sure that's a reason to quit your job and go and try and start the next Shopify. What do you what do you expect the conversations to be um, with businesses with respect to investments that I guess have a choice on where where are they going to invest you know glo business is global um, does that put Canada as a disadvantage look business leaders in Canada and in most of the world want to pay their fair share of taxes there isn't a uh, a, a race to the bottom here that uh, that serious business folks are, are going after but they do want to make sure that they are establishing themselves in jurisdictions where they can be competitive uh, and where they can ensure that they have the absolute best chance of raising the capital needed and to, uh, uh, to ensure that they have the best chance for growth. 
look, we're 2% of the world economy. We can't forget that. We need to ensure that we establish the, uh, the circumstances and the environment that's best for investment. And unfortunately, the headlines coming out of this budget are not going to further that. You can't deny, though, the, the need for housing, right? Population growth um, ha has, been, has been staggering, and that is helpful in the long run to, you know, um, economic growth, to solving things like um, labor shortages. So housing them is an important part of, of a strategy. If you're a business, you yep. need to have a place that your employees can live. But we need job growth. So without job growth, there's no income to pay for that house. No matter how cheap or expensive that house is, no matter how big your rent bill might be, if we cut it in half, you still need to have a job. You know, 10 years ago, we had 11 companies in Ontario producing solar panels. The last one just shipped up and moved to North Carolina. If you want to start one today and you look at these kinds of numbers uh, on your risk adjusted return opportunity, you wouldn't do that. Um, without those new jobs, it doesn't matter what the rent is. Political consequences to this, um, you know, because you are close with the Conservative Party, is this a, um, a, a rallying cry that they take up? Is it difficult once these things are implemented and it gets implemented June 25th? To, to scrap? Uh, no, I don't think these things are, are, are difficult to scrap, and I, I would expect that the opposition is uh, going to be, uh, you know, vehemently advancing some of the arguments you're hearing from Mark and myself and the other economists that have been on here. This is not good news for Canada. This is not good news for Canadians. This is not good news for the social contract. You asked where we'd find the money. Look at we have an evolving and changing demand on our social. Uh, on, our, uh, on our social goods that we fund. Uh, it's, it is housing today. Uh, maybe there are other things that we could have allocated funds from. But, make, but having headlines around the world that uh, will disincentivize investment and will, dis, uh, will uh, hinder economic growth is a, is a big problem. And it's coming at a time where interest rates are high and we're not really sure how much lower they're going to go, maybe if at all in the U.S., possibly a few rate cuts in Canada. And the companies are still dr struggling with um, inflationary factors. 100%. You know, you talked about uh, high rents. Uh, you know, landlords have high mortgages. Uh, and, uh, you know, if one of the main factors that's causing the, a lot of the rate of inflation that we have in this country is the printing of money that has been going on, uh, you know, for, for a number of years. So, look, even at these levels of, uh, of deficits, and the, uh, uh, I'm quite concerned. I'm not sure how much we are contributing uh, through this budget to the problem uh, that we're trying to solve by printing more money. Well, let's try and understand the link to, you know, when we're talking about um, capital gains taxes to economic growth. Investment is one part of it, but hiring is another part. And it's at a time where major companies are looking at the landscape, the cost pressures they face, and choosing to lay off employees. Does this make that worse? Look, there was a... Uh, Toby, the CEO of Shopify, just yesterday pointed out um, on uh, Twitter that the uh, huge increase of public sector hiring the last five years while well, double the rate of private uh, sector hiring and, and self-employment, entrepreneurs starting up your own small businesses were now negative year over year in terms of growth. And he said that would lead to poverty for our country and I don't know that he's overstating it. Um, this, and that was before today. Um, and you know what, you can talk about housing, but last month it was free uh, birth control, and before that was free dental care, and, and every month is a new reason to have to pay more tax and try and squeeze the limit a bit tighter. This, and it'll be the same in May and June, um, but at some point this government's got to face the fact that it is not an L supply of money within the tax base in our country. Is this the beginning of more taxes? On different things. Well, we've got to figure out how to pay for all this stuff that we're uh, that we're creating. And again, getting the social contract right, I can assure you, I don't know a serious business person in this country who doesn't want to ensure that we have a good social contract. But uh, creating new uh, new expenses and circumstances where we don't have the money doesn't work. So you know, a lot of this has been focused on investment. Where is it going to come from? And both of you, you know, work with pension funds or have worked with them in, in different capacities. Part of the budget, um, Finance Minister Christia Freeland has asked former Central Bank Governor Stephen Polos to lead a working group that will look at ways for Canadian pension funds to put more of their capital into domestic opportunities. 
um, whether it's housing developments, venture capital, infrastructure. So is the solution in our own backyard possibly, you know, and that's been sort of a, a uh, you know, a, a bit of a thorn is like all these Canadian pension funds investing outside of Canada. How do we encourage them to be more domestic? Does this solve some of our Look, investment I, I questions? Think, I think the minister uh, floated a trial balloon last fall in the economic statement about this and a bunch of the pension plan CEOs were uh, quite quick to respond. Uh, Evan Siddle from AIMCO said it was, I'll paraphrase, ludicrous as an idea. Their job was to do the best they can for their uh, pensioners and their workers and not to fund, you know, as I wrote a blog, not to fund the neighbor's furniture startup. That's not the role of, of pension plans. The flip side is, of course, if without the firefighters in Ontario having their neighbors having jobs, maybe that pension plan capital could be better invested. But I don't think it's for politicians to decide what country that should be in. Well, so it sounds like, Willie, you're nodding your head. Are you not optimistic that this initiative could potentially bear fruit? Look, Mark is right. Uh, our pension fund managers in this country are looking out for the uh, retirement savings of, uh, you know, uh, employees from teachers to, uh, to uh, municipal employees, uh, nurses uh, across this country. And, uh, and uh, their job is to make sure that there is enough money we are 2% of the world economy. They have got to invest around the world. I would say to you that they already have an outsized percentage of their investments in Canada, just by proximity and opportunity and that sort of thing. Um, I don't think that there should be any imposition on our, uh, on our pension funds to, uh, to, uh, to invest uh, more directly I mean, in Canada. They know, they, they, they know the answer is going to be no. So having a meeting, working group with an esteemed former central bank governor is a great idea to make it seem like you're doing something. I think that's part of my problem with this government. The appearance of doing something isn't the same thing as shovels in the ground. And uh, these, um, there'd be what, three or four maybe round tables with the teachers and the OMERS and the AIMCO and BCI and CDPQ and whatnot, and then they'll all leave and nothing will change because they've got a future obligation to their workers, and uh, that's just how it is. Uh, but I, I get why the government wants to make it seem like they're doing something, because that's just the nature of their, of their shtick.